everyone, it's Katherine. So I've decided that I'm going to film a series of tutorials over the next few weeks that will take you from start to finish on how to create your own digital planners. These will be methods that I use to create my digital planners. There's actually several different ways that you can make digital planners, but I'm just going to share with you the methods that I use. And primarily, I'm going to be using Keynote and Adobe Illustrator. Those are the two softwares that I prefer to use for my digital planners. If you don't have access to that software, I will link you in the video description to Adobe Illustrator. I believe it costs $19.99 a month and it's just so worth it to me. It makes things so much easier with creating planner layouts. You can create planner stickers. You can create so many different things. So especially if you're intending to sell your planners, Illustrator is just a great tool to have. Um, it'll give everything a professional feel. It's just amazing. And then Keynote is free for Mac users. This is also available on your iPad. I don't play around with Keynote on my iPad very much since I have a MacBook and I prefer doing all of this stuff on my computer but I believe you can do most of the things in the iPad version that you can do on the desktop version. I'm not 100% certain on that, but I think that you can. <laughs> just don't take my word for it, but I'm pretty sure that you can. So anyway, I also just want to say a lot of these tutorials, um, you know, I'm just going to be talking. I hope I don't talk too fast. I get kind of social anxiety when I film this stuff and it makes me stutter a little bit. So, you know, sorry. But I'm just going to do my very best to teach you guys how to do all of this stuff. So anyway, to get started, I have already pulled up Keynote. And the very first thing that I'm going to teach you is how to build those spiral binding rings in Keynote. Um, not all of my digital planners have these. They're completely optional. But the ones that do, this is the very first step that I take in designing my planners. So it's really easy to do. The very first thing you're going to do once you have Keynote pulled up is you're going to go to your shapes and under basic, you're going to select your rounded rectangle and it's going to insert a blue square. So right off the bat, the first thing that you need to do is adjust the height. You can also adjust the width at a later time, but the height is the most important thing when it comes to making these look like actual spiral rings. So you can make them as thin or as thick as you want. Like you could make a really thick ring like that. I'm going to make it thin for this tutorial. So already just by doing that, it's already starting to take the shape of a ring, but it's not three dimensional yet. So there's a few different steps you need to take to make it look three dimensional. The very first is changing the color. So if you don't really care about the three-dimensional look, um, you can just change it to any solid color. There's a few different ways that you can do that. You can select one of these preset colors right here. There's a few different to choose from. I really like this shade of yellow. Or you can select this color wheel and this panel will pop up and you'll have several different options for selecting colors. If you know the hex code of the color that you want to use, you can go to your color sliders and you can enter the hex code right here and see that changes it to hot pink. So that's one way to change the color. Another way is to do an advanced gradient fill. So this will give your ring the effect of, I don't have the right one selected right now, but it'll give the effect of 3D by having the colors on the outside darker and then it fades in the middle to meet in the middle to a lighter shade. That's called a radial gradient. So in order to do that, you want to go here and you want to make sure that radial gradient is selected. And see how it's darker on the edges and then lighter in the middle. And that gives it a 3D look all on its own. Another way that you can give it a 3D look without doing the gradient is to go, um, let's just go back to solid color fill. And so right now it's pink. And I'm going to go to shadow and I'm going to select drop shadow. And see, that gives it a little bit of a 3D look. And the last thing that you can do, this is my preferred way to do my spiral rings. You can do an image fill. So what I like to do is either make textures in Photoshop or purchase texture packs on Creative Market. You can get tons of textures for a really good price on Creative Market. 
and you can get like gold textures, rose gold, silver, glitter, basically anything that you can think of. You can find it on Creative Market and purchase it and use those textures to fill your spiral rings. So right now I'm going to use a texture that I purchased from Blog Pixie. I believe this is from her stylish or maybe glamorous <laughs> textures pack. And it's a gold texture. It's really pretty. I've got it saved to my downloads right now. So the way that I'm going to use that to fill my rings is I'm going to select the ring. And under fill, I'm going to go to image fill. And it was already the last image that I used. But if, let's say that wasn't the last image that I used and I needed to pull it up, I would just go to the folder that I have it saved under. I have it saved to downloads. And I would click on it. And then I would make sure that this right here is selected as scale to fill. Because if you have it selected on tile or something, see how that kind of changes it, which that looks pretty good too. But when you go to scale to fill, it gives it that whole texture. And if you zoom in, you'll see, see how pretty that looks? It looks like a gold ring. So now, um, you know, I could still add that shadow if I wanted to. Um, I'm not going to do the shadow. So that's how you do the ring part. So now you're probably wondering how you add the holes that make it look like it's going through the page. And you do that using your shapes tool as well. So I'm going to go to my back to my shapes and under basic I'm going to select a circle and it brings in this huge blue circle. So in order to make it look like it's you know going through the page you want it to look like a shadow. So you could change it to black if you want to. I think that gray probably works better to make it look more like a shadow because most shadows aren't just solid black like that. So I'm going to change it to a really dark shade of gray. There we go. And now I want to shrink this circle down significantly. So I'm just going to hold my shift key and then drag this edge. And I'm going to make it pretty small. And now I'm just going to let up on the mouse and then let go of my shift key. And then I'm going to bring it and line it up with the ring. So right now it's in front of the ring. But the way that I'm going to correct that is I'm going to click on the shape. I'm going to go to a range over here. And I'm going to click on backward. And now it puts the ring in front of the shadow. And so I made that a little bit too small. So I'm just going to hold shift and drag again to make it just a little bit bigger. Let's see. Okay, so now I have that place that looks pretty good. And if you can see, it's already starting to take the shape of a ring on a page. So I'm going to create just a fake page really quick so you guys can see how this works. I don't have these grouped, so to select all of it, I'm just going to click on the canvas and then drag and both of them are selected. And I'm going to move those out of the way. So now I'm going to bring in, I'm just going to do a rectangle shape for my page. Um, I'm going to change the color to white and there's a drop shadow. Okay, so now I'm going to make this bigger. Now I've got that in place and I need to move this back and I'm going to lock that. Okay, so now um, I can see how these would look to the side of the page. You know, you could bring them right here. You can make this a little more narrow if you wanted to. Um, another way to adjust the size is to go to a range, and then you'll see right here where it says size. I want to make it a little shorter, but I don't want to make it any um, more tall. So I'm just going to adjust the width. I'm going to do maybe 70. And there you go. So that's how you can see what it would look like on a page. This would be if you had your rings to the side. If you want to do like a double page with the rings down the middle, um, I'll show you how to do that now. So what you would do is I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see better. You would just copy this circle right here and you can just select it and then hit control C and then control V and you've copied it and bring it to the edge of the ring and now just hit back. Okay, so now you see it's got two. So then when you add two sheets of paper, which I'll show you, um, the best way to do this is to group these all together. Um, so you select all of them. You can see all three are selected and then you go to your range and then group. Um, so now that's one object instead of three different objects. And I'm gonna unlock my page 
I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to make this half the size and then duplicate it. Okay, so I've got two pages now. So now when I bring this here, I'm going to bring this forward. I want it to be the most forward thing. And now, you know, I can select all this and center it with the canvas. And there you go. That's how you would do it down the middle. So that's just one ring, you know, to make more rings, because you would obviously want rings going all the way down the page. Um, you could just hit Command C and Command V and then align it. And luckily Keynote automatically just helps you align things, um, which is great for these rings. So let me lock these pages and I'm going to duplicate it and make it go all the way down the page. Okay, so I've got tons of rings now. So what I like to do is I like to bring these to the center. And what I would normally do, like if I was making this as a planner to sell, I'd probably make these pages a little bit bigger and then add one more to the top and one more to the bottom. But I think you guys get the idea. This is how you create those spiral rings in Keynote. And it would be a similar method for PowerPoint. So that's how you do it. Um, I'm looking forward to doing all of these videos. I hope they're not too awkward and I hope they're really informative. Next, I'm going to show you how to create a cover for a digital planner. So stay tuned for that. And feel free to contact me if you have any questions at all. You can contact me on Facebook. You can contact me through my website. You can even find me on Etsy and contact me if you need to. I will leave all of my information in the video description. Make sure you subscribe to my channel for more digital planning tutorials. If you want to follow this whole series, definitely make sure you subscribe. I also do digital plan with me videos. And you can check out my website, naptimealt.com, for tons of planner-related freebies that you can download now.